Hello my friends, happy autumn. The day this video goes up, if you're watching it on the day it goes up, it is officially the first day of autumn. It is the autumn equinox. And I thought what better way to celebrate autumn than to do the finally fall book tag. I thought I did this tag every single year and I was looking through my old videos and it turns out I didn't do it last year for whatever reason but I think I did it every other year but in order to not repeat myself I made sure to only stick with books that I've read this year to answer these questions also if I sound a little husky <laughs> it's because I'm still sick I'm still sick I got it really bad and I haven't been able to shake this cold yet. So that's why I sound like that. But we're just gonna go with it. Also, I'm wearing a sweater, even though it's literally 85 degrees outside. <laughs> let's, get in let's get into these questions. Question number one. In fall, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. Immediately thought of this one when I saw this question. This is Where the Dark Stands Still by A.B. Pornuk. I just read this last month. Was it last month? Yes, I just read this last month and I absolutely loved it. How I really like to describe this is The Bear and the Nightingale meets Beauty and the Beast by way of Margaret Rogerson, except instead of uh, specifically Russian folklore, we have Polish folklore. There is a couple of different things happening in here as far as setting. So first we have the forest and the forest is this dangerous dark magical place so we have that that is very vividly drawn within the story but then we also have this somewhat sentient crumbling manner that feels haunted and maybe kind of is that is this another setting that is very vividly drawn it's just everything about this is very vivid i think that the author has such a strong sense of atmosphere within this book so this is like honestly a perfect read for the fall season but just very vivid in its setting and atmosphere so this came to mind right away question number two nature is beautiful but also dying name a book that is beautifully written but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief i wanted to talk about alone with you in the ether mostly because i didn't get a chance to talk about this when i read it i think i read it in june and I never did a June wrap up. This is by Olivia Blake, if I, I didn't say that. Um, Olivia Blake has just some of the most beautiful, stunning writing in my opinion. I think it's very poetic and lyrical, but not overly so. It's very descriptive, but not overly so. This is a love story between two very damaged people. We have a main character, Regan, who has a behavioral disorder, and our other main character, oh, Aldo? Aldo, who is definitely neurodiverse in some way though it's never stated on page. So this has a very strong focus on mental health but also trauma and a little bit of grief as well. There's a lot, there's a lot going on in here and these characters are dealing with a lot. But if this is not the one of the most beautifully told old beautifully experienced love stories that I have ever read like it's difficult to call this a romance per se but it's definitely a love story and I loved every single second of this this was five stars for me I highly recommend I love Olivia Blake in general um, but this one was definitely amazing number three fall is back to school season share a non-fiction book that taught you something new i unfortunately haven't read a ton of non-fiction this year but one that i did read this year was been there done that by rachel feltman this is a rousing history of sex this wasn't exactly what i thought it was gonna be but it was very interesting and I did learn a lot of random things that are now stuck in my brain. Like for instance, I never knew that ducks had dicks and were very rapey. I also didn't know that chickens were able to change their sex. Did you know that? And also like a lot of interesting things when it comes to like women's health and uh, contraception and like contraception back in the day like i'm talking ancient egypt and how they prevented pregnancy and also early pregnancy tests again with ancient egyptians 
the way they would find out if you were pregnant, they would have a woman pee on wheat and if it sprouted, they, they were pregnant. And there's actual science behind why that is accurate. I think it's, def it's definitely very fun. I recommend it. I didn't love the voice of the author and the way it was told, but I did really enjoy the information. Number four, in order to keep warm, it's good to spend some time with the people we love. Name a fictional family slash household slash friend group that you'd like to be a part of. I have two answers for this. One is like an actual group of people that I would like to be a part of, and that is the girls from Invocations by Crystal Sutherland. This is a very witchy, horror, good for her, women getting revenge type story. These three girls, I would just love to have them in my coven. I would love to hang out with them and do witchy shit with them. I loved these girls so much. Jude is hilarious. Emma is very serious and very powerful. I just loved the dynamic that they had together and how they worked together. And yeah, this is, I would love to be just in their coven. You know what I mean? And then not necessarily a, a family group that I would want to be a part of, but probably the best depiction of found family that I have read this year, believe it or not, came from Bride by Allie Hazelwood. This remains one of my favorite books of the year so far. I loved Misery and just the relationship that formed between her and the wolves, between her and Anna specifically. Like the romance in here, great, fine but that wasn't even the shining moment or the best part of this book. It really just was the found family and Misery fi finally finding a family that she could belong to and fit into after being so displaced most of her life. Just the family that she creates in here is beautiful. This book made me cry. <laughs> I loved it so much um, and I loved the gr the bond that these people formed and it was it was perfect highly recommend this this is l my favorite Allie Hazelwood to date all right number five the colorful leaves are piling up on the ground show us a pile of fall colored spines I should have done this before but we'll do it now okay here we go, here's my little stack. We've got Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson, which is one I wanna read this fall if I can. We've got Master of Poisons by Andrea Hairston. This is The Longest Autumn by Amy Avery, and I kinda cheated, it's not the spine, it's the sprayed edges that are very autumnal. And then we have Unbury Carol by Josh Mallerman, and then The Seventh Veil of Salome by Silvia Moreno Garcia. So there's my little, my little fall stack, very pretty. A few of these I definitely wanna to get to reading before the end of the autumn season. Next prompt, where are we? Okay, number six. Fall is the perfect time for some storytelling by the fireside. Share a book wherein somebody is telling a story. I couldn't think of one that I read this year where someone was telling a story, but kind of stretched it a little. But this is Twelfth Night by Alexine Farrell Falmouth, AKA Olive Blake. And in this, there is storytelling. Someone is telling a story through a D&D campaign. Does that count? I feel like that counts. <laughs> this is a YA romance. We're following Viola and Jack who are quite opposites. Jack is a football star at his high school and Viola is a very prickly, some may say bitchy, <laughs> geeky girl who likes D&D &D and is obsessed with this online RPG that the two of them end up kind of bonding over without realizing who the other person is. I thought this was gonna be just like a sweet, fun romance. And while it had those sweet, fun elements, it was way deeper than I thought it was going to be. And I ended up crying. <laughs> I absolutely adored this. This is another one that I didn't really get the opportunity to talk about 
uh, because I read it again in June and I didn't do a June wrap up. But I loved this. This was five stars. These characters are characters that have stuck with me. The story has stuck with me for the past few months and like I'm already thinking about rereading it. So highly recommend if you haven't picked it up yet pick it up. Number seven, the nights are getting darker. Share a dark, creepy read. Well, if we're sticking with books that I've read this year, I can't say that I've read a ton that can be considered dark and creepy, but I'm going to give you both dark and creepy separately. <laughs> so for dark, we're going to go with Midnight is the Darkest Hour by Ashley Winstead. I read this and surprisingly absolutely loved it. Um, it is very dark. It goes into some dark places and some dark themes. There is religious trauma involved and parental abuse and murder and romance, surprisingly. We have a bit of a mystery, our main character trying to clear the name of her best friend by figuring out where these bodies are coming from that are piling up. And also we have this uncovering of secrets that the town has been keeping. Small Southern town vibes, very good, very dark absolutely loved it. And then for creepy, I have What Feasts at Night by T. Kingfisher. I don't think you can really call many of T. Kingfisher's books dark. This has a very light, fun tone overall, but this one did get creepy. I think it doesn't have that same like gothic atmosphere as the first book did, which is What Moves the Dead. This is a sequel to that, but it does it does get creepy with the creature that we're dealing with in this particular book. So if you're looking for something creepy, but you're maybe more of a chicken, <laughs> I definitely recommend picking this one up because it's not super scary, but it, it does, does give you the creepy vibes. Number eight, the days are getting colder. Name a short, heartwarming read that could warm up somebody's cold and rainy day. I am going to recommend Nosy Neighbors by Freya Sampson. This is relatively short. It's 300 and something pages, so not very long. This is a cozy mystery. It is very heartwarming. It's also like, it had a very visceral effect on me, mostly because of the trauma that the main character, one of the main characters had experienced was very similar to some trauma that I've been through. And I just, it kind of, it kind of got me in the feels and I was bawling reading this book but it is incredibly heartwarming there again is this found family aspect to this uh, the characters start off not really liking each other and then end up over the course of the book developing this bond with each other that is very long lasting and beautiful and i think that if you enjoy found family if you enjoyed vera wong's unsolicited advice for murderers that you will definitely enjoy nosy neighbors it is heartwarming it's beautiful it's also sad and intense at times and also really fun so it really has it all, in my opinion. <laughs> Number nine, fall returns every year. Name an old favorite that you'd like to return to soon. So this was a part of my spine stack, but this is Unbury Carol by Josh Mellerman. I I feel like every single year I say that I want to reread this book, and it's, it's true. I want to reread it so bad. I think I'm just scared because I feel fell in love with this book the first time I read it. This is what like made me love Josh Mallerman as an author. This was the first book I read by him. And this is like nothing that I thought I'd ever like, first of all. It is a Western setting. <laughs> That's not who I am, um, but it worked for me. We have this woman named Carol who has this rare disease condition, I guess, where she slips into these death-like comas and her husband, who only married her for her fortune, decides to take advantage of her latest episode and declare her dead and is planning to bury her alive so that he can take her money and run off into the sunset. <laughs> but there is this infamous outlaw named James Moxie who, who used to date Carol. And once he hears that Carol is 
dead, he's like, no, something is wrong. I know she's not dead. So he rides the trail to try to rescue her before she's buried. And you've got that Western horse riding element. And then you also have this like slow descent into insanity and then you also have these creepy descriptions of just like rot and death and it's so good and i loved it so much and i really want to reread it this spooky season if i can but then again like i said i'm afraid that i won't enjoy it as much as i did the first time so we'll see if i get around to rereading it but this is definitely one i want to get to then we have number 10 fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights share your favorite cozy reading accessories for me very simple some tea or coffee but most likely tea because i've been i've kind of been off coffee lately that it's a whole thing also a blanket any blanket and a candle you gotta have a good candle for cozy reading session i absolutely adore this pumpkin candle that i got i think it was last season or maybe even before i've had it a while now but it just smells so good it's like pumpkin and vanilla plus it's in this little pumpkin shaped thing like i love it i love it so much lastly for an accessory <laughs> i don't know if you can call this is an accessory, but my cats. I think there's nothing more cozy than settling in with a blanket, a candle, a hot beverage, and a kitty. You know what I mean? These these are my boys. As long as I have my, my boys, it's gonna be an amazingly cozy reading session. So I don't know if you can call cats an accessory, but there you have it. And that is the end of the tag. The last prompt is spread the autumn appreciation and tag some people. I want to tag the other members of the Black Hat Book Coven. Kristen from Kristen Craves Books, Becky from Bex Reads, Jackie from First Lady Reads. I'll link their channels down below. And honestly, anyone else who wants to do this tag, you can say, I tagged you. That is it my friends for the finally fall book tag i hope you enjoyed it talk to me down in the comments let me know some of your answers to these questions especially the first question a book with a vivid setting always looking for more of that and a dark and creepy read if you don't have anything to say but want to let me know you were here you can leave me some fall leaves in the comments if you like this video consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not done so already and i will see you in my next video bye